San Francisco was a left bank of comedy in the 80s. Artistically, culturally, supportively, you felt you were at the place where it was happening. The comics here were taking chances and, and were like verbal jazz artists. Same moose and squirrels in the highway. Going north? <laughs> felt like you could try anything. And there was the audience for it, because San Francisco has always treated stand-up comedy as an art form. There's 14 full-time clubs in the Bay Area, plus it's scat of one-nighters. I could walk four blocks from here. That was my shortest commute. I was like a hooker. It was such a big boom. There was work everywhere for everybody. Paula Poundstone moved from Boston. Bobcat, Wolf, Whit, Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams, Dana Carvey. Michael Pritchard, Stephen Pearl. Jose Simone. Will DeGeneres. Bob Sarlat. Rob Schneider. Bobby Slayton. All these guys. And more, and tons more. Let's get more. I know what you women are thinking. I don't care if he's funny. I want the body. <laughs> Larry was one of those guys, it's like a real fine wine, and it ain't for everybody, but if you can enjoy it, it's ridiculously great. Oh, the craziest thing ever happened to me? Speeding ticket in Montana. Johnny Steele is a force of nature. He, a cop pulls me over, tells me I'm going the speed of stinking light and wants $5 cash on the spot. <laughs> hey, what's the matter to you, boy? I burned up the damn road. Ain't you got no respect for the law, you damn city slicker? I'm gonna stick it to you, boy. And the $5, <laughs> $5? <laughs> Look, Buford, here's the 20. I'm gonna speed through your whole crappy state. How's that look? He talks to everybody, which is, I think, a gift. That's Johnny. He talks to everybody, and equally, abusively, but funny. America! Will knew what he was doing. He would take the wrong position and mock it. <laughs> which was wonderfully subversive. We sold arms to Iran, gave military intelligence to both Iran and Iraq. Now, how did that work? Here, put this gun in your pocket. He's got a gun in his pocket. <laughs> he knows about the gun, man. And we got paid from both of them. Yeah! yeah. yeah. He developed his own style. That guy became a polished, great act. Comedy competition winner, Mr. Will Gert. It's upward momentum. Calm down. Calm down, Mr. Excitement's here. <laughs> God, we're like celebrities, this is ridiculous. This guy comes over and says, get your calendar out, and two weeks from now, you're opening for Dennis Miller in Las Vegas. Like, what? What? Who? Huh? We were little rock stars in, in this town. And then... Everything kind of went boom and collapsed. A bit like a comedic recession. The gigs dried up. This club closed and that club closed. My life sucks. The world hates me. I'm living in a cartoon. <laughs> At this point, I'm qualified to be a crash test dummy or a greeter at Walmart. This is on. So that's what I'm saying. It's dead. Stop. It's all business. Doesn't matter. Nobody's interested in how clever or inventive you are. Apparently, I'm the number one cause of vaginal dryness. <laughs> it's like the rest of America. You either become really famous, like uh, Dave Attell and Louis Black, and you make a lot of money, or if you just work in the clubs, you're making very little money. So, a huge gap. I get to book something in February, and I gotta do it soon. I'm growing my fingernails extra long just so I can hang on to the edge right there and not slip off. I think comics are like blues musicians. We get better as we get older because we learn more tricks. We're much more confident. I love to get up there on stage. And, and when it works, it's better than anything. It's better than sex, better than drugs, better than family. It's better than, than chocolate fudge. It's, it's, ah. better way to earn a living than making people laugh out loud on purpose against their will.